4, if you'd like to stand in the honor of reading God's word here this morning. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, if I can read this today. Amen. Praise God. 2 Corinthians in the New Testament, chapter 4, verse 4. What we read last week. Are you there, church? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious God. I love that. The glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. I want to minister on the second part, what the devil hopes you'll forget. I ministered this last week, uh, and I have several points, but I, 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 I'm going to keep it to two messages. I could have gone further with this, but maybe another time. But let me just hone in on this here this morning because... Um, Folks, listen, uh, I, I know you're doing your best to serve God. I know you love the Lord. I know you desire to know God, to, to walk closer with the Lord. I, I realize that. I know that. But also a lot of you have been attacked by the devil, attacked by the enemy. I, I know that Satan's trying to discourage us and hitting us in every which of direction. I realize that too. I understand what it is. Another way I believe the enemy's trying to hit us as well is he's trying to keep us from remembering what we have and who we are in Christ Jesus. He's trying to keep us from remembering who God is, what he's done for us, and all the benefits and blessings that we have through the Lord. I pray this message might be encourage you today, help you, if anything, stir your heart to desire more of God, to have a right and proper perspective about this, a spiritual perspective, looking through the eyes of the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to minister thy word. I'm asking for the unction, the anointing the power of God. I want to thank you, Lord, for healing me, Father. Thank you, God, for I feel so much better this morning. I thank you, Lord. Um, I believe it's a miracle to even have this message here with us here today. Thank you for your blessing. Lord, we love and praise you. May we give you glory and lift up your holy name. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. And you may be seated this morning. How many love the word of God today? How many love the Lord? Everybody hold up your sword of the spirit today. If you have your Bible, hold it up today. Amen. Doesn't that look wonderful? Hallelujah. Love the Word of God. Love the Word of God. Get you a good, good study Bible and devour it. Amen. What the devil hopes that you'll forget. If you have been a Christian for any length of time, you have discovered that there is a real enemy out there who does his best to give you trouble. Do I have an amen there? Does his best. Satan does all that he can to keep you from tapping into the spiritual resources that each of us has through Jesus Christ. He wants to keep us bound. He, he wants to keep us from trusting God. He has all kinds of tricks and gimmicks to keep our focus off of God and on to other things. But the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, the devil that is, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. First Peter 5, 8, there's a lot there. Maybe some of you uh, know what uh, that verse means right now. Maybe the devil is after some of you. Maybe he has been after you today or yesterday or this past week or past month or past year. We know that the devil went after David. We know that he went after Paul. Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? We know that Satan went after Peter because Jesus said Satan has asked that he might sift you like wheat. We know he went after countless others. His goal and mission is to shipwreck your faith, my beloved. In fact, the word devour, First Peter 5 and 8, means to gobble up. Amen. It means to consume. It's like eating a bag of Lay's potato chips when you can't stop. It's like getting a pack of Oreo cookies double stuffed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. You give me a pack of double stuffed Oreo cookies, you are the best member in this church. You are tops. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I got some yesterday. Amen. Amen. And my wife doesn't know it. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, the, the devour means to consume, to swallow up, to destroy. And that is his mission. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He does his best to shipwreck our faith. You know, uh, in our men's Bible study, we have been learning about the different pieces of the armor of God. And, and we're learning what they mean and what each function has and how to use it. And it's, it's a good study. It's a deep study. And uh, it's so important in his last days. And we, us men, we were talking about this last uh, Thursday night, uh, how important it is in these last days uh, that in which we are living, uh, that uh, these are the last of the last days. And Satan comes to attack and try to destroy and he blinds us and even even uh, some of us men in the church uh, uh, Satan is even working against us and the very study that we're doing is what's happening to us 
But we're blinded, you see. The Word of God, uh, the Word of God should be of our highest priority. His Word should mean everything to us. We must take the time to read it and to meditate upon it. But Satan wants to keep you out of the Bible. He wants to keep you out of church, keep you out of fellowship, keep you out of the presence of God. He doesn't want us knowing the Scriptures or what they say. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, Matthew 4 and 4. And if we can just consume God's Word, if we can just digest it, learn it, know it, use it, apply it, we would be a different people. We would be a people that are no longer running from the devil, but the devil is running from you. Hallelujah. Glory. That's what we need today. People full of power, full of God, full of His Word, full of His Spirit, where the devil is afraid of you. Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who are you? Just like when Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and nights, Satan came to tempt him. But what did Jesus do? He went to the Word of God, didn't he? Didn't Jesus say this? He said what? It is written. Each and every time Jesus went to what? The Scriptures. And so he is showing us what we must do as well. He was showing us by example. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit, and the devil doesn't want us knowing it. He doesn't want us using it. So there are several truths that Satan doesn't want the Christian to remember. He wants us to forget of certain doctrinal and foundational truths that we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to blind our thoughts. Did you know that? Isn't that? He wants to blind our thoughts. He wants to blind our minds. He wants to blind our memory from these important doctrinal fundamental truths. These truths that we must remember if we were to live in the power and the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is it that Satan wants us to forget? Well, last week we said, number one, he wants us to forget the power of his resurrection. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Beloved, the second you decide to receive Christ into your life as your Savior, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts. The same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that raised us from spiritual death to spiritual life. And the more you know him, the more you begin to understand his resurrection power. The devil doesn't want you to have the revelation or the understanding that the same resurrection power of Christ resides resides within our hearts. This same Jesus dwells within our hearts. I like what Paul said in Corinthians. This same Jesus, glory to God. God, this same Jesus uh, who saved our soul uh, lives in us. Uh, We are the temple of God. Uh, We are in him. He's in us. And we are in the Father. That's what the Bible says. Secondly, he wants us to forget about the power of his grace. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul also said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 9, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Think about that, church. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly that they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. See, Paul was saying that because of who he was, he was a persecutor of the church. He stood there as they stoned Stephen and killed him. A man of God, a man of faith, a man full of the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying that he should not be allowed to do what he is doing now. Think about this. I mean, Paul, who who, who broke up families and tortured and, and, and put people in prison and things like this. But now... Now, he said, he is a man that's full. He used to be a man that's full of anger and full of hate and full of religious pride. But by the grace of God, he says, he is saved. By the grace of God, he's forgiven and set free. Jesus healed him, baptized him in the Holy Ghost. And then God placed the call of God in his life to preach the gospel of Christ to all who would listen and go into the synagogues and tell people that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Only God can can change a man like that. And Paul was saying that he is nothing, have no confidence in the flesh or in self, but only by the grace of God, he says that I am something. But if, if he has anything good in him, or if Paul has done anything good, it is only because of God's grace, God's enabling power and mercy upon his life. Hallelujah. Amen. My goodness, praise God. Then the devil wants us to forget about the grace of God. He's good. Listen to this, church. You know, he's good about lying to us, saying that God could never use you. That's right. 
because you've done too many bad things. Even after you were saved. Come on, church. Even after you knew better. Even after you knew what the Bible said. But listen to me. This is where grace comes in. It couldn't be further from the truth of what the devil says. See, what God uses imperfect people to do His perfect will. I want to know in here, raise your hand if you are perfect. There is nobody perfect. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory and the perfection of God. We are born into sin. All of us are sinners by nature. Left to ourselves, we will destroy ourselves. We are sinners. But oh, thank God that His grace came along. Hallelujah. The grace of God. Amen. Hey, God is right there for you. He is with you. Don't give up. He wants you to make it. Amen. He gives you sufficient love. He gives you sufficient power. Don't listen to the lies of the devil, but hold to the truths of God's Word. His Word will never pass away. It will never pass away. Amen. Now, the third point I want to say today, the power of His Spirit. I'm so glad you're here today. Acts 1 and 8. The devil wants us to forget about the power of His Spirit. Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that Satan has done all that he can to keep us or you or for others from tapping into the power of God. You see, he wants us to believe the lie that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not of God. He wants people to think that he died out when the apostles died out. He wants you to think that it's not important and not necessary. He wants people to think that it's not of God or that it's of the devil. He wants you to be scared and afraid of the gifts of God. Now, Paul said, now concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. But my beloved, if we ever needed his power, and if we ever needed to be filled with his spirit, and if we ever needed to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, it is today and it is now. Don't shut your ears off. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen. Satan has blinded the hearts of many minds of today. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a gift from God and it's necessary for every child of God. You see, understand this. That would you say that God is supernatural? Amen? Yes. God is supernatural. Therefore, the gifts of God are also supernatural. Amen? It's not something we can be taught to do. It's not something we do out of the flesh. God is supernatural. And we must believe Him by faith. We see Him by faith. We experience Him by faith, and the gifts of God come by faith. Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The word endued there means to be clothed. It means to be covered. It means to be saturated. Amen. So notice that Jesus didn't say to go and start churches. He didn't tell the 500 that. He didn't go and say to get involved in ministry. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say to go uh, witnessing. No, all these are good. All these are important. All these are necessary. But notice the first thing, the first command that Jesus gave to the church was to go and to wait to receive the promise of the Father. Now, Jesus was saying that before you do anything else, uh, amen, amen, there is something else for you. And you must wait for it. You must tarry for it. Uh, what, what was it that God wanted to bless the church with was the promise of the Father or the power of His Spirit. Now listen, God knew, God knew that we could not fulfill the Great Commission in our own strength or our own power or our own might. Whenever God commissions, He also provides. He provides the necessary tools to get the job done. What kind of God would He be if He, if he told us or commanded us to do something, but yet did not give us the proper power or tools necessary to do the job? Through the years, the church has made up excuses of why we don't need this power. But it's all lies from the devil. And the devil is laughing. And the devil 
devil loves it when we take in the lie, hook and sinker. Listen, we have tried to replace the Holy Spirit with other things in the church, just like things like activity or busyness, always trying to fill in the void or the gap. But you know and I know that there is something missing in a lot of churches and a lot of places of worship today. They're missing His presence. They're missing His unction. They're missing His power. Church, hear me today. Hallelujah. That's missing something. Oh, Lord. The past power is necessary to live the Christian life. It's necessary for spiritual warfare and to combat the powers of darkness. I'm honest with you, and I'm not trying to be unkind. But let me tell you, there's another dimension that most Christians have never experienced. It is a spiritual dimension. You can know Him. You can have discernment. You can have discerning of spirits, the gift of God, the manifestation of God in your life. There are gifts of the Spirit and gifts of revelation. God can inspire and anoint and show you and reveal things to you and God can talk to you without even saying a word he puts it in you that you know that you know that you know we're missing the conviction of God today the power of God today the spirit of God today but oh I've got news for you God's saying I've got it it's for you you can have more of me if you so desire we're blinded we're blinded I kid you not It really does seem that way. So many Christians are blinded. They're blind. They might be in church today, but they're blind. All right. They can't see. They're just walking around. I mean, oh, you know, I'm telling you, it's like they're, they're blinded. They're cut off, and they can't see of what's going on beyond the natural. Oh, they talk about the natural. They talk about everything that's going on in life. But let's start talking about what's going on on the other side. On the other dimension. I heard you, brother. You want to sneak over here to you, amen? (laughs) You know, it's like there's something close to me, but I can't see it. You know what I'm talking about? And There he is. All right. Close. Okay, there he is. Is he moving on me? Is he right here? (laughs) No, I didn't. But let me tell you what also happens, folks. We miss God when we don't see. We trip and we stumble and we fail and we fall when we don't see. But God says, I want to open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot better. Amen. Let me tell you what's even better when I put these things on right here. All right, that's even a lot better. You know what I'm saying today, church? Amen. We need it for spiritual insight and discernment. It's needed if we're going to be effective in our community and in the world. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit. Folks, there were 120 obeyed the command of Jesus, went to Jerusalem and waited in the, uh, for the promise of the Father for 10 days. You know what they did? For 10 days they prayed and they tarried and they worshipped. But on that 10 days, something special happened. Something wonderful happened. They were all in one accord. They were all in agreement. They were all in harmony with God. They all believed, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing might of wind. They were appeared, there appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And as a result, they were praising and they were magnifying God. Peter preached under the unction the anointing of God. 3,000 people were saved that day. God was on the move and those who were expecting and anticipating were blessed by God. I know this one thing. This is what is needed in the church today and this is what the devil doesn't want you to remember. He wants you to forget about the spiritual gifts of God. He wants you to forget that we need His power. He wants you to forget all about the blessings and the benefits that come through Jesus Christ. The devil wants to keep you blind, dormant, powerless. But don't let him do it. Come on, church. After I got saved, God revealed to me that there's more to obtain. After I got saved, Paul said, brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. One thing I do. Listen to this. Forgetting those things which are behind Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the 
the, I press toward the goal. I press toward the prize. Paul was, Paul said, I'm pressing on. There's more ahead. There's more for me to obtain in Christ Jesus. And the devil wants you to forget that. He'll do everything he can to distract you, to distract you from the word of God, to distract you from God speaking to you, from distract you from tapping into his power. I think sometimes that we look at things the wrong way. I really do. I think we look at it wrong. Maybe we have been taught wrong. Maybe we're looking at it all wrong. You see, we think that once we're saved, that that's the end of it. Yeah. I mean, I see that Christians not pressing on, Christians not growing, Christians not trying to obtain. They think just as worldly and carnally as a lost person out there. Just like that. No spirituality whatsoever. We're saved, so that's it. That's enough. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, listen, us Pentecostals, we think that's it too. See, but that's wrong thinking. We think that we have obtained some high spiritual plateau so that that's it. No, 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 no. No, there's the initial, then there's the continual. In other words, although we have been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, there are many refillings. Paul said, and do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but what? But be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5.18. And it means this, be being filled. It's written in the continual action. You don't stop. You keep seeking and knocking on heaven's door. You might have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, but when's the last time you were refilled? You might speak in tongues, but when When's the last time you've been filled with God's presence and God's spirit? When's the last time you've had a fresh outpouring from heaven that renewed and revived your soul? Be encouraged because God wants to fill you with his spirit, his presence, and his power. But the devil doesn't want you to be empowered by God. He wants to keep your mind distracted. He wants to keep us divided in the church and mad and angry with each other. And always putting people down and and picking on people and things like this. He would love for people to be prejudiced and things like this. To divide and split the church up and keep their minds and thoughts divided and their hearts not pure. Oh, yes, the devil doesn't want you to be empowered. He doesn't want you to have the victory. He doesn't want you to share your faith and witness about Jesus to others. The devil hopes that you'll forget about this. And those in the Bible who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know what they did? You notice what the characteristics of what they did? You read, you study in the book of Acts. When they're baptized in the Holy Ghost, they praised and they magnified God. You couldn't keep them quiet. You could not keep them quiet. They praised God. They magnified the Lord. They worshiped God. That's what happens. They worshiped. They sang. They glorified. The evidence that you are filled with the Spirit of God is this. You want more of Him. You want more of God. You want more of His presence. You want His Word. You want to praise Him and worship Him. You just want Him. Your conversation is Christ. You talk about Jesus because he's your life. He's your love. He's everything to you. See, the devil wants to keep us occupied. He wants to keep us busy and he wants to keep us distracted. I am telling you the tricks of the devil. Listen to this. Listen. He wants to keep us distracted, loss of focus, weak in faith, divided, split up, out of harmony with God, out of touch with his spirit. But don't let the devil do it. The Bible says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And that's our responsibility. Let's have the unity of the spirit. Let's join our faith together as one. May we believe together as one. May we have unity as a body of Christ as one. May we have harmony together in the spirit as one. The devil hates it. He fights against it. But church, we have the power. We have the victory. We have the presence. We have his word. We have Christ. There's so much more for you, child of God. Oh, hallelujah. I get excited when I know that there's a banking table set before you. There's so much more for you. You can have it. You can have it. Pull up a chair and get it. Hallelujah. Get it. Get it. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Oh, that little, that little Yorkie I have. Matthew, you need to take that dog. Take that that little Yorkie that I have. That little 10 year old, little, little Yorkie, listen to me. She's, she's, she's convinced that if I leave the house, this is the way it is. If I leave the house, it doesn't matter if it's any length of time. 
if I leave to go do my bus and then I come home, or if I come to the church and then I come home, and then I come home after my bus, or I come home after church, or I come home after prayer meeting, or I come over, whatever. It doesn't matter. She has got it fixed in her mind that she is going to get a treat. You better believe it. And she, when I walk in that door, this girl is absolutely just ballistic. And she's jumping all over me. And she's jumping up on my leg. And she, she's trying, and she gets down, and she rolls around a couple times as if that's the answer. She's trying to look all cute. And she does it, and she does it, and she does it, until finally I say, okay. And I walk over to the microwave, and she's watching every move that I make. And I get the treat box, and I... And I hold the treat. Sometimes I toss it out. She has to go get it. But sometimes I tease her and I hold the treat. And then what I do is I, I, I let her just taste it. <laughs> That's rotten, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. I let her just taste it. And then I, I, I pull it out of her mouth, you know. It's all slobber all over the thing. And, man, she's looking at me. She's like, I need that. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't get that, I'm going to die. If I don't get that, I'm not going to make it. I live for that treat. Her eyes, big brown eyes, are fixed on me. And she's saying, please give me that. Listen, my beloved, if we had that kind of attitude towards God, if we had that kind of attitude towards one, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if we come in and we say, God, i got to have it. i got to have it. i got to have it. i got to have you. I want you. I want your presence. Because Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. Ghost, and we're saying our eyes are fixed on you, and I'm not leaving, and I'm not looking away until I get it, until I get it. You have that kind of attitude. You will be blessed by God. Amen. Samuel Chadwick said, Satan laughs at our toil, mocks at our wisdom, but trembles when we pray. The devil hopes you'll forget about the power of his spirit. All right. We talked about the power of his resurrection, the power of his grace, the power of his spirit. Number four, the power of his preservation. Hold on with me here. Amen. I'm going to preach a little bit, and we're going to eat a little bit. And then later tonight, I'm going to preach a little bit more. All right? The power of his preservation. Beloved, the devil hopes that you'll forget that God has the power to keep you. God has the power to preserve you. I believe that no one, not even the devil himself, has the power to pluck you out of God's hand. No one can snatch you out of the Father's hand. But hold it, hold it. Now, 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 now. Wait a minute. Let's not run away with this. Because we understand that we are a free moral agent. We all have a choice. And we are to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, and follow God. But geez, God doesn't make you, and God doesn't force you. That's a choice that's up to you. But as a born again child of God you belong to God and God has the power to keep you and this is good to know why 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 especially when you're going through the fire the devil wants you to forget that God has the power to preserve you there might be times when you don't feel saved anybody know what I'm talking about Anybody got I have a witness here? Anybody know what I mean? Uh, come on, be real honest. There are times when I don't even feel saved. Sometimes when I'm sick or sometimes when I'm going through the desert or the valley or a dry season in my life, I don't even feel saved. I can't sense the presence of God. I don't have direction. I feel disconnected from the Lord. But folks, we're not to live by our feelings. We're to live by what? By faith. See, the Bible doesn't say you're saved by your emotions. It doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say you're saved by your feelings. It doesn't say that. No. What does it say? You are saved by grace through faith. The Bible says this. Look at this. This is so good. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Let me read it again. Who are kept. That word who, put your name there. Are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Through faith. Faith in God. Faith in the blood. Faith in Jesus who died on the cross. Faith in the power of God. See, these verses present three truths concerning the security of the believer. All right? A little one or a bracket around the one. Number one would be this. See, 
it was a relevant message for Peter's audience since many of them were experiencing intense persecution of the time. There are some things the devil doesn't want you to remember. Number one, believers are kept or we are protected by the power of God against Satan's sinister forces of evil that seek to destroy their lives and salvation through Christ. Second Timothy 4 and 18. And the Lord will deliver me. Can you say will deliver? And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom it doesn't say we won't be thrown in the fire it doesn't say that we won't be tossed in a lion's den it doesn't say we won't face a goliath it doesn't say we won't won't walk through the river but it does say that we will be preserved by the power of god the three Hebrew men were tossed in the fire, but God stepped in the fire with them. Remember the story? What happened? God preserved them. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, but God was there to shut the mouth of the lions. What happened? God preserved him. Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown in prison, but God sent an earthquake and delivered them. What happened? God preserved them. Some walked through the valley, walked through the river. What happened? But God preserved them. You see, God's word says this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Isaiah 4, D3 and 2. Why? Because God has the power to preserve you. Hallelujah. God has the power to keep you. Every person in heaven has been preserved. But let me ask you this. Has every person in heaven gone through have they gone through hardships have they gone through trials have they gone through difficulties you better believe they have every one of them walked through the valley of the shadow of death but god preserved them for they are in glory they are with god they are with the lord they are worshiping and praising god oh listen they would never come back if they even had the opportunity jude 24 now to him who's able to what keep you can you say it keep you hallelujah Listen to this. From stumbling and just present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Amen. Number two, the essential condition required for God's protection is this. Faith. Faith. Let me explain this. God's keeping us by his grace doesn't just work arbitrarily. For it's only through faith that believers are protected by the power of God. Just as only through faith the believers are saved. Everything we have and receive through Christ Jesus must be by faith. For faith is the key that unlocks the door to all spiritual blessings. Therefore, a living faith in Christ as Lord and Savior in our present resp- is our present responsibility in maintaining God's continuing protection i love the story of elisha and his servant gehazi gehazi woke up one morning to see that they were surrounded by the enemy in fact it was a great army it was the syrian army and he woke up and he said to elisha oh no what shall we do and elisha said listen friend don't fear don't be afraid for those who are with us are more than those who are with them and then what did elisha do elisha prayed that God would open the eyes of his servant. Now, I'm going to talk to the church today. And when he did, he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariot of fire all around Elisha. Elisha saw differently than his servant. His servant saw the circumstances around him. He saw the natural army around him, but he did not see what Elisha saw. Mm. There are people in the church that only see the natural surroundings around them. They live by their circumstances. But then there are a few like Elisha that look beyond the circumstance, that look beyond the feeling, and they walk in the church. Maybe everything's come crashing down. Maybe their life come crashing down. But they walk in the church with praise on. Why? Because they see something different than others see. They see God. They see the Lord as sovereign control and God is able to preserve me and keep me through this hallelujah God can keep you (laughs) I'm sorry I feel it I feel it God is able to keep you see the difference was and this is the problem it's not the problem but it is the problem now Elisha saw through the eyes of faith Gehazi saw through the eyes of flesh. 
And it, that's what hinders your life, your marriage, your home, your kids, your church, your ministry. You see, folks, I live on a different plane. I, I live, I'm a weirdo. And I, I sense things other people don't sense. And I see things other people don't see. And I know things other people don't know. And I'm not, I'm not no big shot. Sometimes I wish I didn't know. But I know. God just tells me. God just shows me. But I see things. I see things. I see I can taste it. Do you know what I'm talking I can taste it. I can taste the building out there. I can taste another building out there. I, I can taste it. I can see. Hallelujah. People call them visionaries. I don't know about that. I just believe God by faith. Somehow and in some way, I want to be like Elisha. I want to see it. But a lot of people are like Gehazi. They only see through the eyes of the flesh. My friend, I'm telling you right now, amen, whether you're going through the fire or the water or the desert or the wilderness or the valley, his power is able to preserve you and keep you. Trust in God. Trust in the Lord by faith. Faith is the key. Number three, three little three, three with brackets. The ultimate goal of God's protection is salvation. This speaks of the believer's future dimension of salvation, the obtaining of an inheritance in heaven and the salvation of our souls. God has for you an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled. It doesn't fade away. That's reserved in heaven. You get a brand new car. I had a brand new car. It was brand new. 2014. It was spotless. It was perfect. It was beautiful. But now it's about six years old. It's got some dents in it. It's got some scratches in it. And after going through about six winters in Ohio, it's dirty on the inside. Some of our cars rust away and things like this. But I'm telling you, we got something that won't rust. Something, Brother Ted, where'd he go? That thieves cannot get to. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm -mm. In other words, let's get our affections and focus off things here on the earth and onto eternal things that will last forever. See, let me, friend, we're not taking anything to heaven with us. You're not taking your 401k, you're not taking your stocks. Or your bonds or your retirement. You're not taking with you your money, cars or houses or jewelry. None of this goes with you. Naked you came, naked you leave. But you can bring a soul with you. You can win the loss. You can help lead people to salvation. You can make an internal difference by living your life for the Lord. People see your witness. We are to abstain from the very appearance of evil. Don't give reason for people to speculate. Your wife sees you, your husband sees you, your kids see you. You can make a difference in your life. But the devil hopes that you'll forget about that. People see you. That's a UFO connected to another dimension. (laughs) Amen now. I just want you to know if I just disappear... Amen. Take over. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Like Enoch. (laughs) Amen. Who's ever left becomes the pastor of whatever's left. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want you to know that your witness, your witness makes a difference. Number five, I know you all getting hungry. This is my last point. Y'all be rejoicing now. Pastor only got five points today. That's good. I want to talk about what the devil wants you to forget about the power of his love. Romans 5 and 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The greatest kind of love is sacrificial love. The greatest kind of love is unconditional love. Love that has no strings attached. If you give me something, then give it to me with no strings attached. If you give it to me, I could do whatever I want with it. Amen. I don't, I don't owe you anything. You gave it to me. No strings attached. See, love, it's, it's love that doesn't expect anything in return. In, in other words, God's love. This is what's needed in the church, and this is what the devil hopes that we'll forget, that we are to love one another with the same kind of love that Jesus has for us. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. It's the law of reaping and sowing. The devil hopes that we'll forget that we're supposed to be loving people. We should be blowing this world to pieces with our love. I expected it to be quiet. We should 
be showing this world by our actions and our attitudes what the love of Jesus really is. Because everybody, listen to me, wants to feel loved. Everybody wants to feel loved. Everybody wants to feel needed. Everybody wants to feel accepted. And not everybody is exactly the same. We all have different personalities. We all think differently. And we do things differently. And because you act different, or because you think different, or because you dress different, or because you talk different, doesn't mean that I am to shun you, or to not love you, or to create some kind of clique where you're not a part or allowed to be in it. Because cliques are not of God, they are of the devil. Now I understand that we might have more things in common for instance, uh, Brother Don and I are close, very close to the same age, but I'm more mature, <laughs> older, <laughs> older I mean. We're going to have a lot in common with our age and vice versa. That I might have more with a younger person who I can't really understand or identify with and wonder what in, in the world are you listen to and where are you coming from, what are you talking about and who are you and do you know where you are? <laughs> But I can still love them. Okay? Listen, the devil wants us not to love. And we are to love without hypocrisy. It means that we're not to be fake or phony about loving. We're not to pretend that we love one another. Don't just look like you love someone on the outside, but you can't stand them on the inside. And what we do as Christians is we just put up with them or we just tolerate them. Right? God help me. Tell me I'm not just talking to the wall here. You know exactly what I mean. Us Americans are really good about putting on a front. You've done it. I've done it. We've all done it. But Jesus is concerned about the heart. He's concerned about the inside. Not just treating them nicely on the outside, but treating them nicely on the inside. See, we love with purity of heart and to be sincere, love them as Jesus loves them. You see, there are a lot of church-going people that don't love each other. In fact, there might be some people here in this church that do not love each other. The devil doesn't want us to remember the love that God has toward us, and he doesn't want us loving one another. Love is a powerful tool. Love is a powerful tool that breaks down walls, that breaks down barriers in people's lives. What would happen if people would just love one another as Christ loves them instead of, of unforgiveness and in the church and instead of hate and instead of bitterness and resentments and grudges, we choose to love each other. And you cannot do this without Jesus. And that's how we know we need him. Because some people are easy to love. And Jesus says that if you love those people that are, are like you or those people that are saved, or those, then, then what about those that are not saved? What, it's no big deal if you love those that love you, but what about loving those that don't love you? And that's a little hard. I, am I talking to anybody today? I'm going to tell you sometimes it is hard to love people that, that, that don't like you, that hate you, that despise you. But Jesus takes this even further. He doesn't say just be nice to them on the outside. He says love your enemies. Oh. <laughs> oh dear Lord God. I'm done. I'm going to my office. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And I say God. But they've done this to me. Or they said this to me. Or they said this. Or they lied about me. Or they did this. And then Jesus says, what have they done to you that they haven't done to me? You can't get out of it. The other day, my dog is for sale. That dog's for sale. <laughs> she has a problem. She sins. She sins by nature. <laughs> she is a sinner by nature. And she, when we're gone 
or if I'm upstairs in the shower and if there's any cat food, because we have our cat in the inside because it's been cold, or if we have any milk in the dish, when I come down, it's always gone. <laughs> and she looks guilty. <laughs> and she knows. And I've had to spank her and I've had to put her in the cage and I've had to fuss at her. But I have to be careful because she has a weak bladder. So I come on, sweetie. And I put her in the cage and I go, quit eating the cat food. (laughs) And the other day, I was fussing at her and I said, I am going to get you. I'm going to get rid of you. I don't know why I keep you. I said, why all the time? I I said, all the time you disobey what I tell you to do and you never learn. I said that. I said, I think it was on Thursday. You never learn. And she just looked at me like this, you know. And I stepped back. And then God speaks. And God says, I've said the same thing to you. Oh, God. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? And God said, I've had the same problem with you. I've told you time and time and time and time and time. And you disobeyed my word. You disobeyed my command. You did what you wanted to do instead of what I said to do. It could be the littlest of things. So I've learned my lesson. Never fuss at your dog. (laughs) Lord God. It's like, like having a kid. And Matthew, uh, I, I need to tell you this, that, that mama, mamas are always mamas, all right? And Matthew, you need to come back home. Because <laughs> mama treat me like a kid. <laughs> She's fussing at me. She's getting on to me. And I said, listen, honey, I am not your child. <laughs> Please come home. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I, I lightened it up a little bit because I got to get into something a little heavy. I'm almost done here, but the Bible says that, that love suffers long. It's patient. Love is kind. You're not going to win a lost world out there by being mean to them, but showing kindness to each other. Love doesn't envy. It's not jealous of one another. It's happy for each other. It's happy. Love doesn't parade itself around. Love isn't puffed up and it doesn't brag. That's not love. Love doesn't behave rudely. It's, it's not rude. You know what I mean? Love doesn't seek its own. It's not provoked. Love doesn't think evil or bad of one another. Love doesn't rejoice when someone else fails or falls in sin or stumbles. Love puts up with all things. Puts up. Love believes all things and love endures all things. You you know, we might go through some misunderstandings. We might go through some troubles or troubled water or turmoils even in the church you do it in your family you do it on the job it's, it's everywhere but but the wonderful thing about us as believers in christ is that we're able to go to the lord and pray about this and we're able to come together and talk it out because i guarantee you that 99.9 percent of what uh others heard about you or me or whatever satan gets in there and twists it and lies about it and and causes us to think things that are not true and somebody can say something bad about me to you and it's not true but then you believe what's bad as if it's true and you have judged me based on what somebody else said whose heart wasn't right and therefore now maybe they won't come to the church anymore maybe they won't listen to the word of god anymore maybe they do not respect me as a preacher or a pastor anymore because somebody lied or twisted something satan is so good at that but that's not love how about how about we be patient with one another and why don't we just understand each other 
Uh, maybe I might get you mad. I don't know. Maybe you might get me mad. But don't let the sun go down on your anger. Just love each other. Work it out. Talk it out. Even if you can't agree, just agree that you disagree. You love each other anyway. You love each other. The Bible commands it. See, love is a powerful tool that can change another person's life for eternity. We are even, like I said, to love our enemies. And we, if we could love in the church like Jesus loves us, we'd have an awesome church. You see, the devil wants us to forget about the love of God. And he wants you to forget that we are to love one another. You see, what does it do when we love each other? It breaks the yoke. It breaks the bondage. It breaks the walls. It breaks the barriers. And that's what Satan wants. He wants in the church to build up walls and barriers. He wants their people to be yoked and in bondage and be angry with one another. And, and they, they, he wants to cause chaos and division within the body. And in a church like this, it's so easy to happen, you see, because... We get close. Izzy was just talking to me about this the other day. Young lady hungry for God, want to know more about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And she says, I've, I've grown to appreciate, for I've never been in a small church before. But you have something that larger churches don't have, she says. Not to be unkind at all. It's just the way it is. She says, there's just a close family church. We're there for each other. We, we see each other. We know if we're hurting or not. Um, all right. It takes a humble, willing heart to love. But it's possible with God's help. See, they're just, they're, there are just some of the things that Satan hopes that we'll forget right here. Don't forget who God is and who you are in Christ. Don't forget... That above all, you are a Christian. Above all, you are a child of God. You belong to Jesus. Your life belongs to God. Don't forget your purpose. Don't forget that He loves you with an everlasting love. Now go and love others like He loves you. Love them. I only thing I can figure out is why we get so many kids on Wednesday night. It's because there's something here they're not getting out there. The love of God. The love of God is above all things. I mean, Abby back here, she's one of the best students I've ever had in all these years on my school, but she's so quiet. I, I know my kids. I, I know all their names. And it's a little over 100 kids all together, 120, whatever, with both routes. And uh, there are times I, I get frustrated and they act up get out of hand, get out of control. I really, they, they do, but sometimes I have to really get on them. But I know these kids so well that sometimes in their seats, I only see the tops of their head. And I know who they are based on the tops of their head. <laughs> but I love them. I do. I have a love for them. I want them to know Christ. I want to be an example to them. I want to show and let the light shine. I want these kids to know Christ. We can love each other. There can be a, a, a bonding in Christ that can really affect not only our own lives, but also others out there. I don't want to be a church that's just hypocrisy and fake and phony. But loving, and boy, that takes humility, it takes brokenness, it takes God's help. But see, I know what's going on here. See, I know. I know what's going on. I know the people in this congregation right now that are suffering. I know the ones that are sick. I know the ones that are hurting. I know the ones that are lonely. I know the ones going through financial crisis. I know ones that are struggling spiritually. I, I know what's going on here. I know. And I would hope and pray that this would be a place where you can come to 
and feel accepted, wanted, and feel loved in a place where healing can happen in your life. Would you stand with me, please, Abby? Would you come? Hallelujah. Church, I do not stand up here at all and tell you that I am perfect. If you've known me for any length of time, you've seen my failures. You've seen it. You've seen my shortcomings. You've seen even at times when I've lost my temper. You've seen when I've been aggravated. You you get to know me well enough, you can start reading me a little bit. But you know, some people are better about covering it up than I am. But I know this one thing. I know this. That because God loved me, I love you. We are His... Let God reveal His expression through us. Be a vessel to say kind things, to be more considerate of each other, to be sensitive about what others are going through, and to pray for them, to be there for them if they'll let you, to allow healing to take place. We all have a ministry. Our lives bump into others' lives. Um, God causes our paths to cross. And I know that there are people in Marion that don't like me. I know that. And there are people in Marion that have said some lies about me and about my wife, about us, even about this church. You have it. It happened to Jesus. And I'll be honest with you. I sometimes have a really hard time loving I really do. But I know it's the right thing to do. Maybe I'm not happy with what they did, but I can still love them. And I don't know if that makes sense. I can still love them. So the devil wants us to forget about the power of his resurrection. He wants us to forget about the power of his grace. He wants us to forget about the power of his spirit. The power of preservation. The power of his love. I know I went a little long here today, but if I can take just a few moments with every head bowed, every eye closed for a few moments here today, and maybe God is speaking to you. Maybe you are going through the trial of your life. Maybe you're going through the valley. Maybe you're really going through it spiritually. But I want you to know that God has the power of holding you together. God's power will keep you. It doesn't say you won't go through it, but it'll keep you. It'll keep you. Hallelujah. If you want us to pray for you, just lift your hand and say, Pastor, please pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see the hands. Thank you. Thank you. God has the power to keep you. Maybe some of you, you love the Lord, you're saved, but you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God has the power to fill you with His Spirit. Don't quit. Put, ask God to put a hunger in you. Oh, a hunger in you. A hunger in you. The power of His grace. God can use you no matter what you've done in your past. He's a God that forgives and a God of second chances. And He's a God of love. He's a God of love. And if you'd be real honest right now, perhaps you would say, Pastor, pray for me because I know that I'm not loving others like I should love others. Come on, church. Amen. I'm not loving others like I know I should be loving others. Do you love others as God loves you? Do you love your enemies? I'm telling you, we need His help. Hallelujah. For a few moments here this morning, I want to ask you to come on up here and stand up here in the front of this of this altar here. And I just want us to worship God together. Would you come? Step outside of you. Come on up here with me. Stand right up here in the front. Let's worship God together. Just worship God together. Bring it to the Lord. Just stand facing me. Stand right up here in the front facing me. Hallelujah. Come and let's pray together. Come and let's worship together. Come and let's bring it to the Lord. If you feel like you want to come and and kneel at the altar, that is fine. You can come and pray at the altar. But I just want us to come. Hallelujah. Be there for each other. Help each other. Amen. Let your guard down. Bring down those walls. Bring down those barriers. And let's come and love one another. Let's come and be there for one another. Let's come and ask God to help us. Here today, the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Brothers and sisters, we are Christians. We are Christians. We are Christians. We belong to God. We belong to the Lord. We belong to God. We are family in Christ. We are family in the Lord. And we are to love one another. And we are to help one another. And we are to pray for one another. We are to bless one another. Ask God right now to help you. Ask God right now. Would you pray with me right now in the name of the Lord? Father, as we come to you in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for the truths of the word of the Lord. The truths, I believe, that the devil is trying to cause us to forget, to not remember. But I thank you, God, for the power of your resurrection. And I thank you for the power of your grace. And I thank you for the power of your spirit. I thank you for the power of preservation that you hold us together. And I thank you, God, for the power of love. And I pray for my brothers. Come on, church. Pray with me right now. Hallelujah. God, we pray. We pray for one another. We pray for our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Lord, some of them are going through some hard times, difficult times, but we pray, God, that you would hold them together. I pray in the name of the Lord by your power and by your spirit, God, that you are the power of preservation that will hold them together, Lord God. Lord, you're the one that will be in the fire with us. You'll be in the lion's den with us. You'll be in the river with us, oh God. You'll be in the valley with us, and I thank Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, church, right now to put your trust in God. 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 Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your might, with all your strength. Lean not in your own understanding. Hallelujah. God will direct your path. Trust God right now. Hallelujah. God, I'm asking you, Lord, as we come to you, that you please forgive us. God, please forgive us as we come with a broken heart. And I'm asking you to forgive us for not loving God like we should love. Forgive us, Lord, if we have not been true, if we've been hypocritical, if we have been fake on the outside. Forgive us, God. We give our heart to you. We surrender to you. We ask for your forgiveness. We repent, God, and we ask you in the name of the Lord. Father God, we are imperfect people that you choose to use for your perfect will. And I'm asking God that we will do what is right. We will do what is right. We will do the right thing, the right thing, the right thing. I'm asking in the name of the Lord. Oh God, I pray for the body of Christ. I lift them up before you, God. And I pray that you would help these here today to remember that you have the power to hold them together. You have the power to keep them from cracking up. You have the power and nothing can take them out of your hand. Not Satan. Not all the powers of darkness. Lord, nothing can take them out of your hand. Lord, unless they would choose to not abide in you. But that would be their choice. But your power holds us together. Oh, hallelujah. Do we have a church today that's willing to trust God? Do we have a church today that's willing to be unified as one? A church today that will believe God as one, have faith as one. Oh, a church that will have the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace is one. A church that will be for one another, help one another, pray for one another. Be sensitive. God has so much, so much, so much. Hallelujah. Would you pray for Sister Mona right now? Father, in the name of the Lord, we ask you, God, to touch her body. This physical illness... Lord, there's a need right now, and I'm asking you in the name of the Lord, by the power of your Spirit, to heal her, God. Lord, this Tuesday, God, I'm asking you to be with her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for complete healing in the name of the Lord, pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, for your touch. I pray, God, for your power. I pray, God, as we believe by faith, to overshadow her and comfort her and strengthen her, Lord. I thank you that you are her God, our healer. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name that healing is yours, sister. Healing is yours. Hallelujah. He paid the price on the cross. Receive it, believe it, accept it, know it. It's yours, appropriated by faith. Hallelujah. Virtue has flown. It's yours, sister. Healing is yours, I pray. Name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, Angel, if you don't mind. Hallelujah. Can I ask some ladies to gather around, Angel? Come on. Would you gather around, Angel, right now? Angel, 
He has the power to hold you together. God will always speak truth, okay? He loves you. Power to hold you together. This is a precious child, God, in your sight. And you have created her, and you love her, and you know her, God. And I know that she has a love for you. And I pray for Angel right now, lifting her up in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, against these attacks of Satan in her mind, in her thoughts. I pray in the name of the Lord that there only be light in her heart and light in her thoughts and light in her mind. I pray, God, that you would heal her. I pray, please in the blood of Jesus Christ and she would discern the difference between knowing what is God and what is not God that she would know truly the voice of God the voice of the Lord so I'm asking you to clear her mind and to clear her thoughts and to clear her heart oh God and I pray that you would fill it with your presence fill it with the Holy Ghost fill it with Jesus fill it with light I pray and we come against the enemy of her soul we come against Satan in the name of Jesus We come against you, devil. We come against you, Satan. You have no part in this. You do not belong this. You are not allowed here. Oh, God, this is a child of God. This child belongs to the Lord, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the battle belongs to God. We will trust in the Lord. Help angel to trust in you, to have faith in you, to have faith in you. God, I pray in the name of the Lord. God, she belongs to you, Jesus. So God, clear her thoughts and clear her mind. I pray in the name of the Lord, Jesus. God, I pray. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Belong to Jesus. Belong to Jesus. Come against fear, come against doubt or unbelief, and we come against anything that is not of God. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for Jackie, Lord. We lift her up before you in the name of the Lord. God, I'm asking you to strengthen her and to help her, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. You are everything to her, and she needs you, God. And I'm asking you to hold her together. When all seems to break loose on every side, when it's more than we can bear, when it's more than we can handle, God, you're there to pick us up and to carry us through this journey, God. And I'm asking you to help her in her faith, trusting you, looking to you, believing you. Give her the courage. Give her the strength that comes by the power of your spirit to walk through this, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that she would know that you're right there with her, holding her together step by step, every inch of the way, that you love her, that you see her that she's not alone but Lord you are right there so God we thank you let her be renewed and revived let her know that somehow in some way everything's going to be alright everything's going to be okay our strength is going to be as our faith assured our faith renewed and revived and the eyes of our faith being on Jesus Christ I'm asking you to help her to make a way God oh God to bring her through this and to provide every need I pray God I pray Father and I thank you Lord Lord we love you we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can we pray for one another? Can you find some folks to pray for? Find a group to pray for? Find some folks to pray for because because just want to love each other. Find a group. I know it may be a little awkward sometimes, but find some folks to pray with. Find some folks to pray with. God, we lift up. God, we lift up each other in the Lord. We are brothers and we are sisters in Christ. We are family. We are family that might have different thoughts and different personalities. We might think differently. We might do things differently. But God, we belong to you. We belong to the Lord. So I'm asking you right now, Father, that you would fill us with Jesus who is love. God is love. Fill us with love. Fill us with your love. Fill us, oh God, I pray. And help us to love one another like the way you love us. The way you love your church, a sacrificial love. I lift up my brothers, my sisters. Strengthen them in the Lord. Strengthen them in God. Strengthen them by your spirit, God. Help them along the way in their journey, in their walk with you every day, God. 
even when the devil comes against them we pray for them that they would be strengthened that we'd be there for them that we'd have a listening ear God I pray in the name of the Lord that you would do something miraculous here that you do something supernatural here I pray God in the name of the Lord that we believe you by faith 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 and we love each other help us to love break down the walls break down the barriers break it down God break it down I pray let it come down with the love of God let it come down with the love of God let it come down oh God I pray rain on us with your love rain on us with your love Lord I pray I praise you Lord I pray in the name of Jesus God I pray in the name of the Lord God to minister to my brother and to strengthen him God Lord just to love one another to love one another Hallelujah. Love covers a multitude of sin. I'm not looking for fault. No, God, but to love each other. To love each other. To love each other. Amen. To love each other because we want to feel loved. We want to feel accepted. It's the way God made us. He made us to have fellowship, to be a people that come together. There's power in prayer. Power. When we come together, one puts a thousand of light, two put ten thousand of light, there's power. God is a just God, and He doesn't force Himself on us. Everything I'm talking about here today is a choice that you have to make, and it's all by faith. I, I will maybe prod you a little bit. I might try to help you along maybe sometimes we don't like to be helped along but uh, I might even give you some unwanted advice sometimes <laughs> the Bible talks about reproof and correction it talks about teaching learning to be broken humble before the Lord it's a good day today man now, I know we got lots of food downstairs but I'm telling you I think what we got downstairs is better than any fast food place. Amen. Now we can enjoy fellowship, brother. Uh, I tell you, Joe, it's birthday coming up here on the 20th, but it's wonderful. Thank God he's looking better and better every time I see him. He's a handsome man. I hope I can live to be 83, and I hope I can be as handsome as he is, but I don't know. I think he's got me on that one. Amen. <laughs> But, Brother Joe, uh, it's an honor to have you here, Sister Helen, I'm in your family, uh, grandkids, great-grandkids, and it's just a joy to have you here. Thank you. I thank the Lord. It's good to have Brother Joe part of the worship team here, I tell you. But I'm just thankful for what God has done. We rejoice with you, brother. So, we're going to pray, bless the food, and go on downstairs, okay?